Hey guys, so today we're tackling the five most challenging Total War games in the series. And what I mean by that is unforgiving campaigns that force you to essentially restart if you've made a mistake early on in the first 10, 20, 30 turns, and campaigns that have specific factions that are far more brutal than others because of AI aggression, game mechanics, and other limiting factors. There is a lot to unpack here, plenty of interesting, difficult titles to get into. So let's dive straight in. So coming in at number five, we have Napoleon Total War. And if you watched my top five easiest campaigns video, you'll remember that Empire on there was at number three. So you might be thinking, oh, that's weird. Why is Napoleon here? It should be easy too, right? Well, there are a few key reasons for this actually. And the main problem for me in Napoleon is first and foremost, AI cheats, where unless you're France, in which case you'll have no trouble at all, really with OP units and a decent economy, many other factions generally struggle with with multiple stacks of AI armies that are immediately aggressive towards you and pretty much begin a relentless onslaught of war. The one faction in Napoleon that everyone of course mentions as super difficult is Prussia. Surrounded by enemies on either side, if you screw up the economic development early on and don't get enough income quickly, it's basically impossible to have the armies to repel these invasion forces. And even if you did and you began expanding your borders, you incur major diplomatic penalties for expanding in Napoleon with other factions, so it's incredibly hard to balance defending your territory and expanding out to defeat your enemies. But to be honest, beyond just Prussia as a challenging campaign, any faction you choose will very likely get steamrolled unless you play the diplomacy and economy game really, really well. Simply because France in this game is like the end game scenario threat that will become super powerful and by mid game will already be invading and destroying loads of other factions in the neighborhood. This as a coalition campaign can get quite mundane if you're playing in lower difficulties, but on higher ones, it's really terrible terrifying to suddenly face seven, eight full French stacks ready to release the dogs of war. Napoleon is quite easy for some factions, don't get me wrong, but with the level of AI cheats on higher difficulties especially, and how making a mistake early on with development and diplomacy, things can get very debilitating very quickly, which is why it sits at number 5 on my list today. Let's move on to number 4. Now, Fall of the Samurai is regarded as one of the best Total War campaigns in the series, but it's definitely one of the most difficult as well. Things are quite balanced across the board from an army roster point of view. We've got an earlier Realm Divide style mechanic than in Shogun 2, which can lead to actually a more balanced version of it for most. For me, the biggest issue is tech development and anti-player bias. FOTS favors the faction with bigger guns, bigger ships, and bigger armies, so when you're expanding and taking regions and citing rebellions, etc., and you're meeting new factions in the process, you're pretty much increasing the risk of more war early on. And with similar technologies as your enemies, there is absolutely no way you will come out on top. What the game does so well here is force the player to have a more balanced and cautious approach to making friends, playing tall rather than wide, researching as much as possible to get a bigger edge over your enemies, and essentially preparing you for that earlier realm divide. While in Shogun 2 you don't really stand a chance against Realm Divide, in FOTS you actually have a more interesting and balanced approach to preparing for it and you actually get allies when you do it. So it's not as difficult, but it is still a challenge of course. And then there's anti-player bias. Now, this might just be me, but of all the Total War games, I found that AI bias towards the player can be really, really prevalent, depending on your faction and circumstances. Multiple times I've experienced AI navies from factions on the other side of the map show up to bombard my ports for no reason, armies show up to invade my vassals and my territory, and of course, in very hard or legendary, keeping allies in the run-up to Realm Divide is nigh impossible. So the whole game is anti player bias at this point, which, as it sounds, is a really, really tough time. Usually, the most highly regarded Total Wars are the most difficult, simply because there's more balance and because the AI poses a more regular and interesting challenge. When FOTS came out after Shogun 2, it showed some aspects could be made even more balanced and engaging, which is why it gets so much high praise. But on the flip side and on higher difficulties, campaign management and the AI is still very difficult to deal with, but not as difficult as Shogun 2, which is why it sits at number 4 on my list today.
Next up, we have a tie between Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion and Medieval II Total War Kingdoms Americas campaign. With Barbarian Invasion, things are a bit like Attila in that it's built for die-hard, challenge-hungry masochists with a pension for sacrificing anything and everything just to survive the harbingers of doom, Huns, Vandals, and the like. The AI usually betrays and beelines straight for you, and sure, some mechanics are quite easy, like it's always a breeze to build an economy, and cheese, cheese cheap but decent armies that can defend your territory, but you almost always will be up against insurmountable odds and on multiple front wars, which in a total war game is the number one toughest of combinations. The Medieval Two Kingdoms Americas campaign, on the other hand, is a more interesting one because you've got these technologically advanced factions like Spain, England, France invading this new world, so clearly they have an edge, but they are limited in numbers and they're up against hordes of native armies, again, which at higher difficulties can get overwhelming by the time reinforcements arrive from Europe. And on the flip side, playing as a native Aztec or Mayan faction, things are even worse because you're up against not only these pike and shot wielding Spaniards, but the rest of the Native American world as well. So wars on all fronts and a disease infested European ship full of shiny metal men, it's really, really not an easy time. Both of these campaigns are slightly harder for me than FOTS or Napoleon because, for one, they're much older and therefore filled with more broken mechanics and crappy anti-player, and of course, not a lot of balance. Plus, their battles are actually tough compared to modern games, which are almost all stat-based, right? So, losing masses of troops is very, very easy, and replenishment is very, very unforgiving, especially in the Medieval Two Americas campaign. But they're not as hard as my final two entries here. Here, which I think you'll all agree definitely deserve their positions on this list. Coming in at second place today is Shogun 2 Total War, and this is mainly down to the realm divide mechanic. On top of everything else, just like an FOTS, the anti-player bias, the need for a strong navy to protect your trade ports and nodes, or a strong and consistent diplomatic approach to keep masses of enemy factions at bay, the realm divide mechanic, no matter what difficulty really, will always kick in and clap you when you're least prepared. The best advice any player will give you about Shogun 2 is to play like every other faction will eventually hate you. So keep your friends close but your enemies closer, strike before they do and make sure to cut off their naval capabilities, keep your daimyo honor as high as possible unless you want to get into essentially an early realm divide, and pray you've done enough to survive. The other main reason why Shogun 2 is second today is because it's especially unforgiving for the beginner. If you don't know the key tips and tricks, if you don't have that experience, if you don't know what to expect and what to focus on your early campaign with each faction, and if you don't know how to respond to changing, very quickly changing diplomatic circumstances and threats, you are utterly screwed. And it only takes experience to know there's no going back on a doomed Shogun 2 campaign. The AI leaves no mercy for you, and the only thing really in its way is a well-designed and managed Yari Ashigaru wall with archers firing from behind. That's literally the only thing that will stop them. Overall, Shogun 2 is an interesting one because for the experienced player who knows how to bait the AI in battles and what units are far more OP than the rest and how to manage a trading economy, no matter what they do, you can never be as prepared as you think you are for betrayal and for realm divide. And for the beginner, it's absolute hell, at least for the first handful of campaigns, until you've lost so many times that YouTube tutorials is the only way forward, which it usually is. Now let's move on to the final game on our ranking today. Attila Total War is definitely regarded as the toughest game in the series, and specifically the Western Roman Empire at legendary difficulty, and to be honest, it's very easy to see why. Your territory is stretched thin with revolting cities due to culture and religion, a failing economy that's at the mercy to seasonal effects, and of course, the migrating menace from the east with Attila. For even the most experienced Total War player, Attila as the Western Romans is pure insanity as you fight to not expand in the world and seek everlasting glory, but essentially survive, which compared to other games is a breath of historical authenticity and challenging fresh air. 
The thing I found here in Attila, at least with every campaign you try, from easy difficulty with the easiest faction, say the Sassanids, to the legendary difficulty with the Western Romans, you will almost always have to restart or reload a save somewhere to do something different or better because the plan you thought would work in your head worked for a while until you faced 8 stacks of tier 3 Hun armies ready to begin steamrolling through your territory. No matter what you do, how well prepared you are, 90% of the time it's not going to be enough, and this totally unforgiving nature of the game is why it has to be at the top of this list today. Everything is set up, all the odds are set up against you, and if you don't have that survival approach in mind, if you're not willing to sacrifice entire cities, regions, provinces to the enemy, chances are even when you do expect things to go bad, they will be worse. Overall, Attila is a hot mess of culture, religion, economic management, betraying allies and plague and untimely weather and extremely cautious experience in learning how to survive stacks on stacks of top tier enemies that will stop at nothing to bring you down. It has a well-deserved reputation for all of these reasons and more for being the most difficult game in the series and I think you'll agree, all of this is why it deserves to be at the top of the list today. So that's it for today guys, difficult total wars can be quite a subjective topic, but in this video I try to blend a bit of my own subjective experience with what is widely regarded by the community as the hardest total war campaigns in the series. Hopefully you'll agree with my list, but if not, I'd love to hear what you think and what your top 5 most challenging total wars are in the comments section below. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative, if you did please do leave a like and let me know what other top 5 total war lists you'd like to see. Subscribe to the channel for more Total War content just like this, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.